Imagine knowing how many traders were placing orders in a stock before those orders were even fulfilled. Imagine knowing the sizes of those orders, the speed at which buyers found sellers for them, and the prices of not only the highest and lowest orders, but also the prices beyond that at any given time time. In other words, imagine having a lens through which you could see a stock's liquidity, the supply and demand, reliable supports and resistances, all in real time, before the rest of the market ever found out. Welcome to the world of level 2 market data. You will often see many trading streamers, usually day traders, that have the level 2 on their screen when trading. This is because of the major advantage it gives them, and it can give so much information on the stock they're looking at. It can tell you if a stock is about to break out, it can tell you if buyers are losing interest, and it can also tell you if sellers are taking control. If you don't have the level 2 knowledge in your trading arsenal, you're definitely missing out on some key information. In order to understand the level 2, we should probably go over the level 1 data first first. Makes sense, right? The level 1 data is usually right above level 2. You've probably heard most of it before. It's more of the basic type data of the two types, but a lot of traders still use it. Level 1 data generally provides the following information. Bid price, bid size, ask price, ask size, last price, last size. The level 1 data provides plenty of basic intel for a stock. You can just think of the level 2 as an expanded and more in-depth version of the level 1. In other words, picture the level Level 1 as a rough outline. It gives you somewhat of what you need, but just the pure basics. But the level 2 gives traders a clearer picture of what's actually going on with the stock, because it provides more data and more information on the stock's movement, more information on trading prices, trading sizes, and more importantly, more information on who's in control, the buyers or the sellers. At first, the level 2 data looks just like a bunch of flashing lights and numbers moving up and down randomly, almost kind of like an airplane cockpit. There's so many buttons and dials you don't even know what you're looking at. I completely completely understand that, but once you kind of know what you're looking for, it becomes a lot easier to read. So usually the level 2 looks something like this, where everything is moving rapidly and colors and numbers are flashing and changing. So I thought I'd take a screenshot so we can slow down and know exactly what we're looking for without confusing changes and whatnot. So as said before, all this information right here is the level 1 data, your very basic foundation data. Below that is the level 2. We have these two tables, the one on the left is the bids, or you can think of them as the buyers. So this right here is the highest price the market is willing to pay for the stock at the time, which in this example is AWX. So the highest the buyers are willing to pay right at this very moment is 530. The table on the right is the ask or you can think of them as the sellers. So this right here is the lowest price the market is willing to sell AWX for, which is 535. These letters that you're seeing are abbreviations for exchanges. So it just shows what exchanges these orders are coming from. Then we have these numbers, which are the sizes of the orders. So for example, this guy wants to buy 200 shares of AWX if the price ever reaches 530. Then there is this person who wants to sell 500 shares if the price ever reaches 535. Now can you start seeing why these numbers might be very valuable information? I should also be clear, all of these orders are limit orders, so they're all pending, they haven't been filled yet, they're just requests for where buyers and sellers have their orders set to. If you did want to see live orders, orders that are being filled right at this very moment, you would look at the time in sales, which is right here. These are all the orders that have been filled and are currently being filled, so you can see the price where they were filled and how many shares that are bought or sold. Green means it was a buy, red means it was a sell, and gray means it was inside of the spread. So we went over all the data and what it means on the level 2, but how do we use it in order to tell if buyers or sellers have control? Well from my experience, the level 2 works best with key levels of resistance or support. So as an example, say we have this chart, and we found an all time high right here at 530, and we're wondering if the price is going to break through this key resistance or not. This is where the level 2 comes into play. If we look at the level 2 data, we can see a big stack of buyers exactly at the 530 mark. You can also see there are 5 separate orders from 5 separate exchanges at 530. Whenever this happens, the level 2 will make all these blocks the same color. So in this instance, it's green. It does this so we can quickly see in the blink of an eye who's in control, the buyers or the sellers. This is actually called stacking. Often people will say, oh the bids are stacked, meaning there's a bunch of buyers from different exchanges 
exchanges trying to buy at a specific price. So in this instance, at our key resistance level of 530, there are five different buyers willing to buy at this price compared to the one seller that wants to sell. Since we see more buyers than sellers, we can be more confident the price will break through this key resistance level. Just picture it as five kids versus one kid in a fight. Who's more likely to win? The five kids. So whenever trading near a key level of support or resistance, you want to see if there are more buyers or more sellers stacked. And you can quickly do that by seeing the big stacks of color. But this is not all you should be looking for. Oh no. There's much more information at hand. You should also be looking at the sizes of the orders. As an example, yeah, there could be orders to buy at 530 from five different exchanges and only one sell order from one exchange. But if these five buy orders are buying 100 shares each and the sell order is trying to sell 10,000 shares, even though there are more exchanges trying to buy at that specific price, the size of that one sell order is massive. So if we were going back to the fight example, sure there might be five kids, but the person by themselves is a UFC fighter, which could probably take five kids at once. I know it's a weird example, but hopefully I'm getting my point across. So you should not only be looking for big stacks, but also be looking at the sizes of the orders. So say if there is a huge seller selling 60,000 shares, it might not be a good time to enter, as 60,000 shares is a lot of shares to be bought up, and it'll almost act as a wall the buyers have to break through. So if you wanted to go long at a specific level, you want to see big stacks in the bid section with big order sizes, and you want to see small stacks in the ask section with small order sizes. Complete opposite if you wanted to short, small stacks in the bid section, big stacks in the ask section. You can also use the level 2 to see where key levels of support and resistance are. So if there's a big order size all the way down here on the bid, that's most likely a strong support level, because a lot of buyers are willing to buy down here. If there's a huge order on the ask, it's likely to be a key resistance. The higher the number of shares, the more reliable the support or resistance will be. The amount of orders and the sizes of them are a key metric with the level 2, but a just as important metric is volume. If there's no volume, the price will not move, which means you won't make money. We want to be in when there's a lot of movement, which, nicely enough, the level 2 tells us that information too. For that, we want to be looking at the time in sales, this right here. We don't necessarily need to be looking at the numbers, but we want to be looking at the colors and how fast it's moving. If we wanted to go long because we think it's about to break that key resistance level, we want to see tons of green in the times in sales window, telling us there's a lot of buying going on. Not only that, but we want it to be moving fast, almost like one of those money counter machines. If the time in sales is showing a lot of green and it's moving fast, this is telling us a lot of buyers are coming in at once in a short period of time, giving us more confidence that the price will go up. Look at the difference between these two stocks. Look at the speed of the time in sales. You can see that one stock has way more volume than the other. So picture it on a chart. There's a ton of buyers entering trades making the chart go up, but not only that, the volume is going up as well. More and more people are getting excited and entering this trade, but then the key result resistance level comes up and a lot of people realize that, so they get hesitant and stop buying. That's when normally you'll see the time in sales slow down, and when that happens at a key resistance level like this, more often than not, it'll reverse. So as a quick recap, if we wanted to go long for a breakout trade at the 530 mark, which is a key resistance, we want to see a lot of stacks at 530 and big order sizes, especially compared to the sellers. Then we also want to be seeing a bunch of green in the time in sales and it moving fast like one of those money counter machines. Now, I know I'm telling you to look at a lot of different things at the same time. It can be a little overwhelming at first, especially with the heat of the moment when trading, and it almost seems like there's too much going on at once. But just like anything, reading the level 2 is a skill. The more you do it, the better you become reading it. When I read a level 2, I can instantly tell who's in control, the buyers or the sellers. At first it may take you a bit, but you'll get the hang of it, I promise. Reading the level 2 is a very important skill to have when day trading. But another skill that is equally as important, if not more important, is being able to read candlesticks to tell which direction the market is about to head. In this video, I go over some of the most popular candlestick patterns and explain how to trade around them. Go check that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.